So before I tell you why I think I might be reflecting a new reality of theater, I want to tell you about an old reality, a tradition of community theater uh, from my neck of the woods, the Ozarks. So in the Ozarks, um, Arkansas, Missouri, between 1880 and 1910, there was a popular form of entertainment called the Friday Night Literary. The community members from this very rural, remote area would come together weekly to put on a variety show of sorts. And but mind you, these are not artists, right? These are not theater artists, they're community members. The typical Friday Night Literary would consist of a skit, monologues, or recitation of poetry and essays, or uh, styled tableaus with uh, intricate costumes and backgrounds and even lighting design. And it wasn't just a performance of narrative, but also of wit and skill. Uh, often your theater programs would be mingled with um, a spelling bee, or often, always, competitive debates. Um, they debated about historical issues, philosophical issues, but also really insignificant issues because they just really liked to prepare and craft together and receive a good argument. And these people, they did this weekly. And this is the part that maybe I marvel at most because I am a theater producer and I know firsthand how hard it is to pull together something like that on that scale. You must absolutely count on everyone doing their part. And then my eyes just sparkle at the notion of a community that comes together like that. So I, I bring this up not because I make this type of theater, but because I really wish that somebody would again because it doesn't exist anymore, and I wonder why. Did we lose the need to come together communally and express ourselves in this creative way uh, for the sole purpose of, of entertaining and enlightening one another? And then I wonder, what's next? Theater audiences are declining, but so are the audiences for all the performing arts and also actually church. Um, we are coming together less. So, I bring this up, uh, not because um, I make this type of theater, but because I wish that you would, someone would. Um, but before I go way too far into the future where I, I try to imagine a world without theater, let me bring us back to now. So now, I am uh, reading this book uh, because I'm doing research for a theater project. And I'm looking at uh, different gatherings and group experiences because my theater company were very interested in um, expanding the audience's role in live theater. So we're always interested in group experiments. We do so by making a very specific type of theater. Uh, it's immersive and it includes the community in original ways like we go to the community for writing process and for for inspiration, but we also, in the middle of performances, engage with the audience in, in a novel way. And we do it this way for, for two reasons, really. One, we're bombarded daily with outside stimuli, and focus is harder to rein in, and holding an audience captivated is not getting easier. And two, this type of performance has the possibility of providing a true, pure, communal experience. And it may be that we need exactly that right now, when self-imposed isolation is getting easy. So we do it by making, I'll break it down. It is community-centric, ensemble-devised, site-specific theater. And I have to be specific uh, with these terms, and I'll, and I'll explain what I mean. So community-centric. Like I said, we go to the community, not just at the beginning of a project, but throughout. And we ask them, what do you think about blank? And we ask a lot of different groups with varying backgrounds and points of view so as to get complex data. We take that data, it's part of our research, our dramaturgy, and um, it guides us through the creation of our play. It tells us what is true, what is relevant, and it's like a compass for us as we, as we develop the work, which we 
make as an ensemble. So an ensemble is a, a group of mostly actors, but we're also writers and directors and, and a different breed of, of artists, theater artists, really. And uh, we come together using a methodology of devising. And there's so many ways to devise a play, but we come from backgrounds and training, and we share our, our, our tools together. But it's essentially a, a vocabulary that we're all versed in. And we take a very long time to take a look at what it is. So instead of starting with a script that someone else has written, we go to the community first. Well, we have the question first. We ask the community, what do you think? And then it's as if we kind of find the story in it. And then we stage it in a location that is not a theater. So site-specific. Uh, our plays are in parking garages, uh, chapels, museums, and galleries, uh, sheep forts, a residential home, and sometimes it's indoors, but often it's outdoors as well, and this is a farm. And sometimes we will go in and we'll transform this space, and then sometimes we will just leave it alone and be with it. And always in a performance, we include an immersive um, design. So we ask you to do something, uh, carry a prop, which of course you'll have to use eventually in the play, or to follow, instru follow instructions in a ritual activity, or maybe speak out loud. Um, we give the audience agency, depending on the play, uh, to follow their impulses, or follow clues, or follow a character within this imaginary world that we've created. And because this is very new for our community, um, and also uh, we're you know, new artists, but we always need to know how are we doing. Not do you like the play, although we do care about that, of course, but what do you think? What do you think about this thing that we're thinking about? And so after a play, um, we engage them still, usually over food and sometimes drinks, uh, with a survey or maybe a, a facilitated conversation. But we want to know, what do you think about this? We want the audience to think with us. And in these uh, feedback, uh, it's very useful. We change things. We want to know, can we do more? So we actually respond uh, in a very experimental way. Um, but also the feedback is... is Honestly, it's, a, it's validating uh, because it's a new thing in our community and we want people to, uh, to come and experience it. We want to know uh, what other comments. And, and in general, we get things like, this is the weirdest and coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> or, uh, I feel different now. Are you in my head? And my favorite one, and this is really, truly what I think it is that we're trying to do. The quote was, even though I enjoyed this feeling of togetherness, I know that it is opening up my heart and possibly my brain. And they're right. So theater has the potential to do something big already. The art form is a mirror for society to, to see ourselves in and to, to see how we're behaving with each other and hopefully to inspire us to make strong choices and treat each other better, right? It, we have a social purpose, but... Theater can also change your brain. So there's a part of your, your brain that is uh, considered the novelty center. Um, and it's activated uh, when uh, there's unexpected stimuli. Well, this, this novelty center actually has quite a bit to do with your learning capacity. And uh, it's because it's connected to the, the hippocampus, which is the learning center of your brain, and then the amygdala, which is the emotional center of your brain. And we all know about dopamine, right? Yeah, we like dopamine. It's the reward chemical. And studies show that quite a bit of it is released in the context of a novel encounter. And that good feeling is rewarding and we'll seek it again. But essentially, this is affecting our brain and possibly growing. So that means that we have a chance through, oh, let's say, mind-blowing site-specific theater to grow our hearts and open our minds. And of course, I'm excited about that. That's the kind of theater I would like to make. Because I'll be honest, I'm afraid that we as an art form might be fading away. I can maybe not imagine it in 100 years, right? But in 500? Sure, it's not inconceivable. 
And I don't want that <laughs> because theater is important. It brings us together to witness the stories of humankind. But this is why I think theater has a chance. If we evolve along with the contemporary brain and we're making our theater uh, to uh, in, incite novelty and to, to spark our brains, then whatever story we're telling and sharing together is so important. And in a sense, we can raise ourselves to a higher consciousness, a group think. And then what kind of thoughts could we have together there? So I'm a romantic idealist. <laughs> And I obviously really love theater, but I'm actually worried. I'm not worried just, to, just about theater. I'm worried about us. I can see this world changing in a way that is perhaps making togetherness harder to achieve. In a world where we don't necessarily have to be together. Well, listen, I enjoy the virtues of technology. I celebrate them daily on, uh, for its uh, shiny convenience and, and their warm, fuzzy feelings. But I wonder if it could be having an adverse effect. I've got to wonder. I do see that perhaps maybe we can't achieve togetherness. Perhaps one day we all become hikikomori. Hikikomori is an individual, a modern-day hermit, a recluse, a person that does not leave their room and exists entirely online. And Hikikomori, last year, this time it was reported, 200 million people of Japan's, sorry, 500 million people of Japan's 2 million population is Hikikomori. So it is happening. Self-imposed isolation is a thing. And it's not just in Japan, it's happening here. It's happening in other places in the world. I'm just saying, guys, we've got to be careful to not become hikikomori. And they say it happens because of the overwhelm of the digital age and the pressures. And because it's easy to not leave your house anymore. But that's okay. That's where I come in. Or rather, my theater project. So the current project I'm working on, the reason why I'm reading that book, by the way, theater artists have very meandering research, but I am doing a project with the theater company about technology and social media. It's called The New Now. And uh, it is basically, we're asking how are we different now? How is technology, social media, instant access, how is this affecting you as an individual and us as a culture and a community? And of course, that's a huge topic, so it's taking us several years. But essentially, we're asking what is different, and, and, and we think it's important to know. So how is romance different in the new now? How is conflict resolved differently now? <laughs> because everything is different, we've discovered, we've learned through our research, almost everything is different now, from how we shop to how we mourn. And as a project, I think ultimately we're just trying to understand this new world so that we can make well-informed and conscious choices as we navigate through this very dizzying space. And ultimately, that's actually what we're doing with the premise, the, the ensemble. We are employees, customer service agents uh, for this omnipotent, uh, ambiguous, it's still in development, uh, corporation slash culturation. Uh, but we're here to help. We want to make sure that you get the best and not the worst of the new now. And that actually is this fictional role. This actually is what we're doing as a theater company in our community. So the, the customer service agents, they actually go on the journey themselves through a series of trials of technology. And we bring the audience with us. But they go through it also. We go through it also. And... We make this kind of theater because we enjoy it. It makes us feel like something's really happening to us on a cognitive level. Um, it makes us feel like we belong with the community in a very special way. And in a world where some really amazing things are possible because of technology, my 92-year-old grandmother can Skype in from California to watch my family grow. The answer to almost anything I wonder about is probably available at my fingertips within seconds. And I don't have to leave my couch or put on pants to be totally inspired by a TED Talk or a podcast or, or a film. Or, right? All of that is good. These are gifts, and I am grateful for them. But 
I can imagine a world where theater does fade away. And I think it's important that we don't stop coming together to entertain and enlighten each other. Ultimately because it's better together. Thank you.